Today we are looking at the 5 best ways to use Morph Transition in PowerPoint. Let's start with number 5, which is the flying in effect that really takes your presentations to the next level and makes it very dynamic. This is a slide that we're going to create and we want to create the text fly in effect. It works for text, but also for images or any other objects. Let's start from a blank slide and add a background image, right click format picture and we go to the color tab, the image tab and then picture color. Here we can turn the picture into black and white and that's what we want for the monochrome image effect. Let's add a rectangle on top of the image. In our case, we're going for a blue one, remove the outline and go for a dark blue grayish tint. Right click format shape and we go to fill and we want to put the transparency to about 45%. And this gives us a pretty cool looking background image for our slide. Add a text box on top. In this case, we're going to use Avenir Next as a font, which is a pretty nice font. So Avenir Next, increase the font size, center it in the middle, and we want to make it heavy. So we can choose the sub font, which is the heavy one that we want. Increase the font size by a little bit more, turn it white, and further customize to your needs until you're happy. If you're satisfied with the results, you can control shift drag to make a duplicate version. And we're going to create a subtitle, reduce the font size and give it your subtitle. In this case, sign painter, which is a pretty cool looking font that goes very well with Avenir Next. So let's select the font, sign painter. And this is a very nice handwritten font, which is very clear to read. Give it a capital S and that looks pretty good. Center the name in the middle. And then we're going to duplicate the slide. So right click, duplicate slide. And the text, we want to move it up a little bit because we're going to add two text boxes underneath. This can be text boxes, but it can also be shapes or pictures. The effect that we're going to add remains exactly the same. Add some dummy text. In this case, we're going to use two columns. And the font that we're using is Avenir Next, but the ultra light version. And that combination goes really well with the Avenir Next and the heavy version. Justify it so it's two columns. That always looks neat. Center it with the edges of the title. And then position it so you're happy with the result. Select both boxes and copy them to the first slide. And here you drag the boxes of the screen to the bottom. And you don't want to position them on the same level, but you want to drag the right one down a little bit. And this way, when you add the morph transition to the second slide, so transitions and morph, you'll see that they fly in, but at a different speed. And that gives a very cool extra touch to your slide. Let's preview. And this, I think, is a very nice way to change your slide and make it just that little bit more professional. Let's look at number four, transitions. And it's a good way to keep the audience engaged with nice transitions on your presentation. Let's have a look at the preview slide and then a transition that we make with the morph effect. Let's start from a new slide, add a background image. We want to copy some text, so the title from the ones that we just created. It can be your title and subtitle, that doesn't really matter. We're going to align it to the right so it balances nice with the picture. Duplicate the slide, and here we want to add some rectangles. So let's cover the entire slide. And now we can see the width of the slide, remove the outline and the width of the slide. We want to divide it by three. So in this case, 11 and 30 roughly. Press enter and that will select only one third of your slide. We copy this three times and we give it a different shade of the blue that we're using until we cover the entire slide. And that gives us three nice parts for your slide. There's a little gap, but we can just adjust it. That doesn't really matter. Shapes, let's add a circle on top of it. Remove the outline and make it white. And then we want to copy it over the three boxes. You can do this with four, you can do this with two or one. It doesn't really matter. In this case, we're going for three. Let's add a subtitle. Give it the Avenir font, maybe Avenir next. And make it bold, that looks a bit better it white and center it in the middle. Expand the text box so it's all on one line and then also copy some of the dummy text from the previous slide. 
this can really be anything that you like your own content. Um, I'll use quite some text because sometimes it's difficult to fit some text on the slides. It's always easier to take text out. Select them all, align the middle, and then if you're happy, you can just copy it to the other parts. Control shift drag, this is a really useful shortcut in PowerPoint, so you don't have to control C, control V. Let's go to insert and choose some icons. Let's do one for money, one for travel, maybe an airplane, and maybe a house. The library is quite extensive, so you can find a lot of icons that are native in the PowerPoint, or you can just add your own external icons if you want. Position them in the circles. Let's turn the airplane a little bit, position house, and then the money. Now this is already good, but we want to give the shape fill, the graphics fill, the same color as the background. And that makes it just that little bit more integrated with the slide. And dark blue, that looks good. Now we want to select and position everything correctly. So let's maybe shift it up a little bit more until we are happy with the result. That looks good. Center it a bit more, give some breathing room. And once we're happy, we can just select all three shapes. I'm selecting them separately because I don't want to select the title in the back and then paste them on the first slide. Drag them down. And here we're going to use the same principle. So we want to not have them all flying at the same time, but we want to drag them out a little bit more down each step until we reach some sort of a ladder. And if we add the more transition, they will fly in at a different speed. Let's preview the result. And this is a pretty cool way to transition to the next topic on your slide um, in a more creative way next to the standard PowerPoint transitions. Now, this was an example of how you could transition to a three-part slide. You can also do it to any other. I'll do just a one full slide transition now. So let's add the rectangle on top of the entire page, drag it to the right and add a second layer with a darker color on top. Select the text from a previous slide, just your content, and you want to put it on top of the slide on the right that we're creating. If you don't want to use the Avenir Next font, you can change it to any other font. Um, I also like the Bebas Noia, so let's try Bebas Noia. It's a very bold font, which goes very well with any handwritten fonts like Sign Painter. So some final touches to the slide. Let's increase font size, position it correctly, add some dummy text, and then we want to duplicate the slide once we're happy. Here we drag the panels on top of each other. You do the same with all the content. And then you position the content in the center. Select the second slide, go to transitions and morph. And this way you can have the animation fly in. Let's preview. And this way you can make a nice transition from one slide to another using the morph transition. Let's look at number three, which is the zoom effect. And this one makes your slides look very dynamic. So let's have a look at the example, a welcome slide, and then you zoom into the picture and transition into the content. Let's see how we make this slide. Let's start from a blank slide, create a new one, remove everything that's on there and add a background image. Now we want to copy the title that we just made and paste it on the slides make some modifications in this case welcome everyone and let's make it slightly larger increase the font size that it looks a bit more balanced with the rest of the picture let's change the color the red stands out a bit more compared to the yellow that looks nice position it correctly and then we duplicate the slide right click duplicate slide and here we want to select both of the text boxes, drag them outside of the screen. And here we also want to position them slightly further apart from each other for that nice fly in or fly out effect with Morph. Right click the picture and we want to increase the size. So keep the crop ratio the same, but you want to increase the picture in the background. So everything zooms in a little bit. So everything's more zoomed in in the picture. And once we add the Morph transition, that will do its thing. Let's add three circles with some content, so no no fill and just a white outline, maybe a little bit more white, that's more clear. And then copy it three times across this slide. 
This is a really good example of where you can position them horizontally and using some sort of the grid, like the rule of thirds, to balance them nicely on your slide. For the icons, we want to use the ones from the previous slide, it's just some dummy icons, and select them in the middle, give them the white fill so it matches the slide, and position the subtitle below the boxes. Arrange them so they line up, and then we want to transition, morph, and increase the duration a little bit. Now let's preview. And this way you get the zoom effect, and while you zoom, the three next dots appear, or the three highlights of your presentation appear. And if you scroll back, you can get the reverse effect. So both of them are really nice. Let's look at number two, which is scaling. And this is an amazing technique to highlight products or details of your products. Let's look at the example. And here we can zoom in on the Tesla and have some images or some text fly into the picture. Let's start from a blank slide, right click format. And we don't want to just use a white slide, but some more gradient to it. Add some depth to the slide. So a light bluish grayish tint from the bottom left. Let's add a car, a PNG picture, so it's no, um, has no background. Copy the titles and make it the font gray so it stands out more on the slide. Let's make it dark gray. That will look better, yes. And give it the name that you want, in our case, Tesla. Increase the font size a little bit more. And then change the wording so it's darker red. That will look better in the in this case. Right click format and the shadows that we used are quite hard. So let's use a little bit more transparency, make it more subtle. Change the text to model Y. And then we want to duplicate the slide. Right click duplicate slide or control D shortcut. Zoom out again. And on the second slide, we want to increase the picture of the car or your product picture and position it on the side. It can really go over the border, that doesn't matter. And you want to create the effect or the illusion that you're zooming into it. So don't be afraid to go too large with the images. Add some circles on the left, no outline, and make them gray, the same color as the title, and add a number. We're going for a one, two, three sequence. Change the font, increase the font size, make it bold until you're happy with the result. And then we want to add some dummy text next to it. So let's select one of the text boxes that we had created. Paste it next to the number, increase the text box a little bit, and then select the text and make it dark gray. Let's use the same font, lights a bit too little. So let's go for a regular. That looks good. Once we're happy with the bullet point, you can select both of them and copy it. And then you control shift drag to keep everything on the same line. Change the numbers like one, two, three, and then position everything correctly. Here we can see that you can nicely align it with the start of the word Tesla, and then your slide looks quite balanced. Select the three bullet points and drag them to the left of the first slide. Do the same thing, so you want to shift them apart for the nice fly-in effect. And then go to the second slide and add a morph transition. And this way the bullet points will fly in and your car will scale. Let's preview. And this is a really cool effect to create some depth to your slides. Number one, revealing. My favorite morph trick and it really makes people wonder if it is PowerPoint if you do it right. Let's look at the example, and here we can have a reveal effect with some clouds coming in, and it really creates a 3D effect of your slide. Let's start from a picture, and we're looking for a picture where we can select some sort of an object in the foreground. It can be a skyline, it can be a mountain, it can be anything with some sort of a clear edge. Duplicate the slide, right-click Format Picture, and Remove Background. This gives us a pink colored slide, and we want to mark everything with green that we don't want to keep. So everything in pink should uh, be removed. In this case, the sky, the water, and we only want to keep the mountain and the person. Once you're happy, click on Keep Changes, Ctrl C, the picture, and paste it on the second slide. And this creates an extra layer on top, which you don't see because the images are exactly the same. 
Now we want to add some text, copy some text from one of the previous slides, paste it on the image, change the wording to, for example, travel. Let's use all caps and quite a bold font, increase it by quite a lot. And then we want to position it somewhere on the top of the mountain. Let's shift it to the back or let's bring the first mountain to the front, crop it so it's easy to select, and then play around with the positioning of the word so you are happy with the result. We're going to shift it a little bit downwards so the person is just in the middle of the two letters. And that's easy because our cut in PowerPoint wasn't perfect and if you position it in between, you don't see it. Right click on the first picture and add some drop shadow to the top. Reduce the transparency and increase the blur size and that gives some extra depth from the mountain to the letters in the back. For the text, we also want to do a slight drop shadow to the right. That gives a little bit more depth to the text effect. Increase the blur, transparency a little bit, and there you're happy with the result. That looks already pretty nice. And now we want to, we can get rid of the first slide and we want to add some clouds, some PNG clouds. You can just find them online. Anything with a transparent background. Position about four across the slide. You can scale them, you can reposition them. It's clouds, it doesn't really matter. And then maybe one more from the top left. And this is our finished result. And now we want to animate it and make sure that everything flies in. Turn it a little bit more. And depending on the text you have, you can play around with the clouds, make them larger, turn them around. I want some more at the bottom and that looks good. And then we duplicate the slide. We position the clouds and we drag them outside of the slide, all four of them. You don't have to drag them in a straight line. They can fly in from all different angles. And then the travel the word, you drag it down so it's hidden behind the mountain or the first layer of the image. Go to the second slide, transitions and morph. And this way all the elements come in at once, which is a pretty cool effect. Let's preview. And this gives some really nice reveal effect to your presentation to really grab the attention of the audience. As a summary, we have seen the flying in effect of text or objects, which is pretty cool. We have seen the transitions that you can make from one slide to another in a more creative way. We've looked at the zoom effect of your PowerPoint presentations, and we've looked at the scaling to make objects a lot larger, good for products. And at last, we have seen the reveal effect of text and some extra fly-in animations combined. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're looking for more PowerPoint tutorials, I highly advise you to look at the one showing on the screen. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video.